morning, everybody. I'm Mary Carroll, and this is How to Survive English 101. This is uh, to help you get through your college freshman writing class. Did you know that 50% of students out there drop that class? Um, it's true, and I really don't want that to happen to you. I post every single Monday, so please make sure you subscribe. If you hover your cursor over the little yellow box in the corner, the subscribe button pops right up. Um, I post every Monday. I'm, I'm here to help you get through that class and do really well. Today's lesson's very short. I make them all very short so that you can watch them while you're on the quad, in between classes, uh, maybe late at night or maybe in the library if you're writing something and you want a quick reminder of um, how do I need to write that sentence again or what exactly did she say about ha how to handle quotes, things like that, all right? Today's lesson is layering the past. Now, you might not really be aware of this, but it is true that we talk about events in the past as being um, something very far back in the past that happened before another thing happened in the past. We also talk about things that we don't know when they began in the past. Other things we do know exactly when they began in the past and we know exactly when they ended in the past and that thing happened before another thing that happened in the past. So that's what I mean by layering the past. Now, when you do this in your formal college writing, you want to make sure you get the tenses correct. Uh, it is common in our casual speech that we don't bother with a lot of these uh, tenses, and we certainly don't use them correctly. But in your college papers now, you are going to elevate your language. Your writing on paper needs to be more formal. So the first tense that we're going to talk about is called the present perfect. You actually don't need to know the names of these tenses either. I just want you to get comfortable with how they sound and uh, um, comfortable enough that you're confident that these really are the right ways to use the verbs, okay? So in the present perfect, it uses the helping verb has. You remember that from when you were in fourth grade, we called it an auxiliary verb or helping verb, all right, it uses has. Now, we use it to express an activity that had some indefinite beginning somewhere in the past, all right? The other time we use it is when that activity in the past continues into the present, all right? So here's our example. Tom has played that game since he was 10. Now, this is an example of an activity that continues into the present. An example of an activity that just has some indefinite beginning in the past might be something like, I have played over a hundred games of baseball, all right? But we know that began some indefinite time in the past. There's no beginning time, really. And that's this expression. The second of the use of the present perfect is when we use it with the helping verb have. And again, it's used to, an ex to express an activity that had some indefinite beginning time. For example, we have seen that movie before, right? There's, we don't really know when we saw it before. It doesn't really matter, but we've, we've seen that movie before, okay? And the last instance is the past perfect. Now, here's where we're really getting to the meaning of this lesson, layering the past. Um, this uses the helping verb had, and it is used when we're describing an action that had a definite beginning and a definite ending sometime in the past before 
some other event in the past happened. All right, for example, Lacey had finished decorating the cake an hour before they arrived. So there are two past tenses in here. Here's the past perfect. Had finished decorating the cake. So she finished that long before the guests arrived, also in the past. So here's how we are layering the past, okay? All right, everybody, I'll leave this up for you a little bit. You can take a screenshot if you like. The next lesson will be developing ideas within a paragraph. All right, you don't want to miss that one. A lot of students get an idea down and then they don't really know where they're going with it or how to figure out where to go with it. So that's what I will talk about in the next lesson. See you then. Bye-bye.